Hello, welcome to the Suburban Appalachia channel. Thank you for joining me today, and I think y'all uh, will like this recipe. You know, we live in a troubled time, and sometimes when we have things on our minds and things are bothering us, uh, there's comfort in food, and God surely has blessed. But there's no other ultimate comfort food more than uh, chicken and dumplings, and here in the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Appalachian Mountains, and here in the South, our chicken dumplings are a little bit different than everywhere else and there are regional dish but here in the mountains it's been something that I grew up eating uh, just delicious comfort food and I was going to show you an easy way to make homemade dumplings chicken and dumplings that will melt in your mouth and your family will love them but first of all I've got three chicken breasts and it's a little over two pounds uh, and I've washed them uh, you can use chicken thighs, uh, and for the healthiness of this recipe, it has a lot of butter in it. Uh, I chose chicken breast, but the first thing I want to do is, is cut this chicken up in small pieces to where I can cook it uh, and get it cooked and then make some uh, broth uh, or stock uh, to make our dumplings in. But I want to be able to shred this chicken up after it cooks. Now, you can put whole pieces in, but if you ever notice, the bigger the pieces of chicken are in the dumplings, the tougher the meat is. So we want to cut these down in, in smaller pieces. Uh, this in a pot here on top of the cooktop. And to that, and I've got this hand that I've worked with the chicken on, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt. And that's kosher salt. We're going to add some uh, later when we do uh, the dumplings. And then we're going to put a little bit of black pepper. Chicken needs salt and pepper. And then to that, I'm going to cover with water. I don't know if you can see down in my pot. And this will make a beautiful broth to cook our dumplings in. Okay, now this chicken, this chicken breast does not have uh, a lot of fat at all. And one of the issues with chicken breast, and that's why a lot of times people are unsatisfied with the way the chicken breast turns out, is because it's just not enough fat. Uh, I know some of you are calorie conscious, and that's okay, but we're going for comfort today. So to this, while it's cooking, I'm going to put in about three tablespoons of real butter, salted butter. And you can use margarine, but I, I, for this recipe and the richness, I prefer, I prefer butter. And so we're going to get this to cooking, and this will cook and simmer for about 30 minutes. About 20 minutes in, I'll check it to see how it's coming along. But it's very easy. Chicken's cut up, about a teaspoon of salt dash of black pepper and three tablespoons of butter covered with water. We'll put the lid on and wash it. And once it starts cooking, I'll check it about 20 minutes in and I'll show you what the chicken looks like when it gets done. When the chicken is finished, we'll remove the chicken. I'll show you how I shred it up and then we'll add stock to this pot, some more chicken stock, and I'll show you how to make the dumpling. Okay, welcome back. Our chicken is almost done and I'll take a close-up of it here in just a little while but I want to show you what makes this richer and has a better taste uh, than traditional uh, chicken dumplings. I take two cups of water here in this little saucepan and five cubes of chicken bouillon and make my own stock from that. If you've got fresh chicken stock that's even better but what I'm looking for is the extra saltiness this will add to it and it's absolutely delicious. But I just heated up five uh, bouillon cubes and two cups of water and this will be my additional stock that I put in a pot and if you've got fresh chicken stock uh, uh, that's even better to use and uh, but this is something that's quick and easy and that's what we're looking for and it gives it such a superb taste. Uh, but I'm going to give you a close-up of what the chicken looks like in the pot, and we'll, we'll go from there. 
Okay, you can see down in our pot here, uh, it's cooked for about 20 minutes on a simmer. And as you can see, it's got the, the goodness out of the chicken as far as uh, any additional flavor it'll add. And the chicken, I've took two forks. And if you can take a, the piece of chicken, as I'm doing right here, and break, break it apart, uh, which it's doing, uh, your chicken is done. And it's, it feels real good. See that piece broke right in half. But we're going to chop this up. Sorry for fogging up the lens. We're going to chop this chicken up and reserve it till after we make the dumplings. Okay, we're going to take this chicken out of the stock and out of its cooking uses. And I have a ladle here, a screening ladle with slots in it, slotted spoon. And I'm going to get this chicken out because I want room to make our dumplings. We're going to take this chicken and shred it up and uh, when we get our dumplings cooked we will add this back into the mixture and it's absolutely delicious but we'll get all that out and while this is still hot uh, i'm going to keep it simmering because we're going to make our dumplings next and i'll show you how how to do that but that's all the chicken out. We're going to set this to side to cool for a little bit. And then I'm going to take this chicken stock that we had over here uh, on standby. It's five cubes of chicken bouillon. And I just put a very minimal salt in the additional or the initial cooking of the chicken. So we're going to pour this right in while it's still hot. And that let that all merge together. And then while this is uh, heating back up before we make our dumplings, I'm going to go ahead. Now you can take two forks. You can let this completely cool off and do it with your hands. Uh, be very careful. And there's Mitt and she's, she approves. She smells his chicken cooking. <laughs> Bless her heart. And Mittens is, like I said, is 19. But I have a, a hand cutter here, hand chopper. And I'm just going to go through this chicken. Uh, be very careful if you do this hot. Don't burn yourself. But what I'm looking to do is I'm shredding this up. I don't want big chunks of chicken in there. I don't want it to be uh, tough. I want everything to kind of mingle together. And the best way to do that, if you're using chicken breast, is to ch chop it up. Or you can use two forks. Use your hands after it cools off. But something about like so, I'm going to keep on going with it. Something about like that. That's the way we like it. And it'll, addition, it'll break down additionally as it, uh, as it sets in the, the, the juice from the chicken and the dumplings. But I'm looking for something about like that. And your family will be pleased with that. Your kids will like it. It's easy to eat. No big tough pieces. Everything seems to be nice and tender. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, now we're going to show you how to, I'm going to show you how to make the dumplings. I'm going to set this lid out of the way. What we're going to do, uh, depending on what part of the mountains you're from, uh, where I'm from and where my wife's from, we make a drop dumpling. And what that means is we make our uh, dough batter up or our dumpling batter up in a bowl and we drop it in the boiling broth with a spoon. Now, if you go on up into Kentucky, the mountains up in Kentucky, and especially up in Washington County, Dickinson County, Virginia, uh, where we regularly used to go to church, up there you'll find that they'll take this dough and make it a little stiffer and roll it out and cut it up into little squares or cubes. We, we're going to make our traditional dumplings. Uh, both of them are delicious. The rolled out dumplings, you roll them out with a rolling pan and cut them. Uh, but this is the dumpling that I grew up eating and this is my wife's recipe. And this is, she makes the best chicken and dumplings. But I told her I would try one uh, to try her, her recipe and I've made them before. Uh, but here I wanna show you this. You need some self-rising flour. You don't use plain flour. I'm looking for the extra salt and the uh, rise and additive is in here. You could take regular uh, all-purpose flour and add some salt and, and baking powder and make, you know, and it will work just fine. 
but uh, this is our last bag of Virginia's best flour, and I can tell you, it absolutely was the best flour that I've ever used, the best period. But unfortunately, the mill up toward uh, uh, Salem, Virginia, uh, closed down, and this this the biscuits that I made in my earlier recipe was made with Virginia's best. This is our last bag. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure out and this is not rocket science, it's not exact. We're going to measure out three cups of self-rising flour. Not exact, maybe two and a half cups. I'll go for three. Okay, and that's a half a cup. I'm just too lazy to grab the whole cup. Okay, and to that, I'm going to add five tablespoons of salted butter. And I've got it over here in the fridge, chilling. And what we're looking to do, we're going to take this butter and I'm going to cut it up and put it in the flour. And then we're going to incorporate this together. And it's, it don't have to be perfect because it's all going to melt and everything's going to be all right. Everything's better with butter in it. <laughs> okay, something about like that. I just cubed the butter up. I'm going to add that into the mixture here. Like so. And I've got my stock back up to boiling. But I'm going to take my hands. Sometimes your hands are your best tools. And I'm going to mash that butter, and you could use two knives or forks or whatever to make it all together. But this butter will add a richness in your dumpling uh, that's just wonderful. Uh, but like I say, you can make this batter up or this dough and roll it out with a rolling pin and cut the same size dumplings. But where I grew up in my wife's recipe, we uh, always had drop dumplings. That's where you drop them in with a spoon. You can make them as big as you want or as small as you want. But this is just an easy recipe. Your family will love it. And like I say, this is the ultimate comfort food. Like tonight for supper, we'll have this. Uh, if you have some nice homemade mashed potatoes, it's good. But actually, yesterday, uh, my wife made us a tomato pie with some of the last tomatoes out of the garden and so we'll have a tomato pie and chicken and dumplings and this is this will feed a big family this recipe so if you remember I had two pounds of chicken and this butter just makes everything so much better and like I say if you if you want to use margarine you can uh, it'll add a little bit of a buttery taste but you won't quite get the same result and like I say, my, my videos are suggestions, and the point of my videos is to show others that, that you don't have to be a chef to cook good food. You don't have to uh, worry much about it. Just give it a try. See what works for you. Uh, there's some things that works for me that may not work for you, but if you find a better way, and it may be even taste better than, my, than ours, this is not, that's not the point. I'm not here to showcase myself. Myself, I'm nothing but God's my everything. But I'm here to, to show people that you can cook. You can feed your family with minimal effort. And this is something you don't need a lot of the special equipment to do. Uh, but any, anyway, when we get it mixed up, we're looking for something. You can see the little balls of butter in there. And that's what we're looking for. Next, we're going to add, slowly add in and mix. You can use milk, but you know me, I like a rich recipe, so I'm using evaporated milk, which it does make a difference, I think, in the taste of your dumplings. So I'm going to start out by just pouring in some evaporated milk. And start mixing it up. It's better to start off slow with your milk. 
your evaporated milk. And that evaporated milk will just add a creaminess and a texture and a richness. But if you just have milk, that's okay. That's okay, you can use milk. Some people even use uh, buttermilk in the recipe, and that's fine too. I'm pro buttermilk. <laughs> Here where I, where I, in my cooking, I use buttermilk for everything. But this evaporated milk, if you can see in my recipes, I use a lot of it. I use a lot of it, and depending on the humidity of the uh, that you're cooking in that day and mixing your dough up, you may need more or less, and that's why I caution you. Just work it up a little bit at a time. And I think it's about going to take the whole can today. It's been real humid here this summer, but today it has cooled off, and it's real nice. And you know what? I think I got a dab. Too much milk, but it's going to all work out. But I'm looking for something. I told you a story. I need a little bit more. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit more milk and loosen this up a little bit. But I'm just stirring, and this milk will go into that broth and add like a, a cream sauce as you go. But uh, that's what we're looking for. Something about like that, it may look wet to you, but I promise you, it'll be just fine. And that butter in there, and that evaporated milk, and I, I declare, I believe, that that is the world's best flour. Now I'm going to get my dumpling making tool, which is this tablespoon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a tablespoon of the dough, and I'm going to drop it right in. Tablespoon of the dough, and drop it right in. And I'm gonna keep repeating this till we get everything in there and I'll show you what these dumplings look like when they're done. But I hope you'll try this recipe, it's absolutely delicious. And I've got the pot boiling. And actually I'm gonna turn the heat up some more. But you need a big pot to make dumplings in. You just need the space. And you just drop them in at random. And I promise you, it'll all work out. I love chicken and dumplings. And I have noticed over the years where I grew up and even here, you know, churches used to have feed people when somebody passed away and, and your neighbors used to cook meals and bring to you. And most of the time, uh, somebody would make a big pot of chicken and dumplings when somebody had passed away and bring them to the family to eat. And you're not going to overcrowd the pot. All this is all going to mix together and it's going to be wonderful. And that right there is going to finish us off. I don't want to waste any. But I'm going to let that cook just like it is till the dumpling set. Just for a little while longer. And I'll show you what they look like when they're done. And you can take and, and break them up a little bit while they're cooking. And that's, that's what I want right there. You can see the dumplings forming. Some I'm going to break off uh, and go down. But you want to keep keep this boiling till the stickiness goes away. And I'll show you what they look like when they're finished. Uh, in the pot, uh, you remember we boiled our chicken, reserved the stock, took the chicken out. In the saucepan, we had five bouillon cubes and about two cups of water. So we're going to let this uh, cook for a while. And I'll show you what the dumplings look like when they're done. Okay, these dumplings have been cooking for about five minutes now. And as you can see, they fluffed up. And this recipe with the drop dumplings, that sometimes the dumplings break up, but this is absolutely delicious. And that butter in there makes it so rich. And so now, knowing the dumplings are finished up, and this recipe, uh, 
the dumplings sometimes break up and that's okay but that's the way we eat it that's the way we like it it's absolutely delicious now we're going to add back in there the chicken that we reserved and we'll stir that in and I guarantee you this will be the best chicken and dumplings you've ever had and when we get back, I'll show you what it looks like all plated up. Well, here you have it. Chicken and dumplings. And these are drop dumplings. And the consistency will look different. But that's what we like. And I'm going to give them a taste test. Put a little black pepper on top. There's a piece of the chicken. Let's get that dumpling right there. Mm. Absolutely delicious. When you make these for your family, they'll be asking for them again. And the butter and the richness from the evaporated milk is absolutely wonderful. And I want to get a close-up of the way they look. Little bitty dumplings. With all that chicken goodness. Absolutely delicious. And this will feed a big family. It's excellent for leftovers. But I want to share this time tested recipe with you. God bless you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you for watching the Suburban Appalachia channel. And I hope uh, you'll subscribe to our channel and like our videos. And we appreciate your support. Thank you very much.